today on Mr. Tesla we've got the brand new Quiddy Tech Plus 4 3D printer. This is Quiddy Tech's brand new 3D printer and their first entrance into the multi-material printing department. This will be the first printer they offer that can connect to the new Quiddy box, which allows you four different kinds of material, very similar to either the Bamboo Lab or some of the other ones that are out there. This new printer also prints with temperatures as high as 370 degrees Celsius. That's just awesome. It gives you the ability to print the materials like PPS and others that are very high temperature, very high strength materials. One of the main reasons I buy a Quiddy Tech machine is because of the high temperature materials, high strength engineering grade materials that these printers allow you to print with. This new printer being able to print up to 370 degrees Celsius with the multi-material box coming out after the first of the year will give us the ability to print some really unique items with some very, very strong materials. So I've already cut the tape on the top of the box. You can go ahead and open this up. Let's take a look at what we've got going on inside of this. So right here on top, the first thing I see is the Quiddy Tech Plus 4 Quick Start Guide. We're going to go ahead and set that aside for a moment. You've got a piece of styrofoam up on top of there. All right, so now that we've got that over there, so we've got a piece of styrofoam up here at the top, right here on the styrofoam. I can see that we've got an SD card ready to go. Let's go ahead and pull our SD card out of there. So there you go, you got your SD card. We'll set that down to the side. Uh, the next thing I see here, kind of inlaid into the top piece of styrofoam, it looks like a glass lid for the machine. Let's go ahead and see if we can get that out of there. Maybe you have to pull it up separately. Well, oh, there we go. All right, so there's our glass lid for the Quiddy Tech Plus 4. Let's go ahead and flip that around. This is a nice big lid. You can see just how big this machine is. I think it has a print volume of 305 by 305 by 280 millimeters. It says plus four up here at the top. Let's go ahead and set that down to the side. Get that out of the way. All right, so nothing else I can see here in the styrofoam lid. Let's go ahead and pull that up. Got the corner protectors. All right, so let's go ahead and see if we can get this thing out of here by myself. Oh, look at this. There's a there's actually two handles built into the very top of the machine that set down into it. You grab them, they actually pull up and give you a handhold. Well, that's pretty neat. Look at this. All right, let's see if we can get this out of there. We'll get the box out of the way. And then we'll set the machine back down. Give me just a second to get that box out of the shop. We'll take a closer look at the machine. did notice that it looks like there's a couple boxes in the bottom of this box. Let's go ahead and reach down in there and see if we can't pull those out of there. Looks like... Uh, a parts box. We'll set that on top of the machine for a second. And that one looks like it is a bunch of the tools that they give you with the Quiddy Tech. So let's go ahead and set that down as well. Let me get this big box out of the way and we'll move on to the printer. Okay, so here we go. We're up on the table. First of all, I just want to apologize to you guys if there's a bunch of noise in the background. My 3D print farm is just as busy as can be. And I literally have to have just about every machine in the building running all at once right now just to fulfill all of our orders. So I do apologize for all the sounds in the background. Hopefully it's not too bad. So let's go ahead and start out by removing this protective film that goes around the box here. We can grab the edge of it. We can get a pair of scissors down behind that. Let's go ahead and pull that out of the way. All right, there we go. You can see here, I think, is the front door. All right, so we've got right here what looks like to be a cable for our screen. Let's go ahead and remove the piece of tape from that. We'll set down our scissors. We've got our two boxes here that came with the machine. One of them looks like it's a tool kit. One of them looks like our power cord and a couple of the other things looks like a filter and a spool holder. Let's go ahead and set the spool holder and the power cord one to the side for a moment. We'll open up our tool box and see what we've got inside of it. So there we go. Uh, looks like they sent us a little tiny package of PLA Rapid Black. We'll set that to the side. Um, looks like some directions here on how to install your touch screen and how to install your door handles. We'll go ahead and take a look at that in a moment here just to see how we can do that. Alright, so it looks like one of these boxes has our touch screen. It looks like we've got a LAN cable for a computer connection. Uh, we've got some liquid oil. That's kind of interesting. Normally they've got grease with these things, but this one actually comes with a liquid oil. So the rest of what we've got in here is we've got a little bag full of tools. That actually looks like there's a fuse in there for some reason. We've got a little extra chunk of PTFE tube. Got a socket wrench there. It looks like it's probably the right size for undoing your nozzle there. Let's go ahead and set that to the side. In fact, we'll set that right there on top of the machine. 
and let's see what else we got. We got a little flathead screwdriver uh, piece here that looks like the door handle, which will set right up here on top of the machine. We've got a scraper. It also looks like they gave us a glue stick here, so we can use that later on. Let's go ahead and set that box to the side. We're going to go ahead and pull the screen here out of the box. Let's go ahead and do that. Looks like it's got a nice protector in there, making sure it doesn't get hurt. Which is a good thing because I don't think UPS is all too kind to our boxes here. So there you go, there's our new touch screen. Let's go ahead and set the box to the side here. Alright, so let's go ahead and take a quick look at our directions just to make sure we're not missing anything. It should be pretty self-explanatory. Uh, it says insert the connecting cable plug into the touch screen interface and secure the cable in the corresponding slot on the touch screen. Alright, so there's a little slot there I'll show you here in a moment that you actually press the cable down to. And then you basically just use the four little connector hooks on the back of the screen here. Put those into these four holes and kind of push it down and it should lock it into place. Let's go ahead and get that done real quick. Alright, so it looks like pretty simple connector fitting here. And let's go ahead and connect the cable into the cable holders. Alright, the back one's a little tight on there. And let's go ahead and stick our screen in. Just like this. And it looks like you just push it sideways and there we go. We've now got our touch screen attached to the top of the Quiddy Plus 4 here. But let's go ahead and remove the protective film on our door. There we go. Uh, it's got some directions on that on how to actually attach your door handle, which we'll do here in a moment. Let's go ahead and grab the door handle. There we go. It's actually got the screws in the back of the handle, so we're just going to remove those, stick those through the holes in the door, reconnect those into the door handle, and we'll get that done here real quick. All right, so we got screw number one out of there. There's a little plastic tab on the screws that you don't want to lose. Those little plastic tabs are what actually stick to the glass. Looks like there's another protective film on the back side of the glass that you're going to want to remove so you can get to those holes. Go ahead and pull that out of there. All right, so we'll take our first screw. We'll stick it through the back side of the door here and make sure the little plastic tab's on there. Looks good. Take our second screw, stick it through the door. We grab the Allen wrench, take a look. All right, that's the right one. Hold your door handle up to the door. Go ahead and start threading those in. I'm just going to do this really gently, just to make sure I don't over tighten those screws. It is a glass door, not plastic, so you're going to definitely want to be a little careful with it. All right, so both of those are in. We now have our door handle attached. Let's go on to the next step here. All right, so we're going to use the plus four quick start guide to get us going here. Let's go ahead and pull it out of the bag. Take a quick look in here just to see if we're missing anything. Alright, so there's going to be a set of screws it looks like on the inside that we're going to need to start removing. And it appears that all those screws are definitely going to be uh, marked in there. So you've got four screws holding the bed down. It's got some zip ties holding down the print head and the Y and X axis together there so that way they don't move. So let's go ahead and start removing some of the screws on the inside and we'll get those out and go on to the next step. So first of all, we're going to open up the door. Looks like they've got a bag over the actual print surface here, which we'll go ahead and get out of the way. And we'll set that back into place here. All right. The first one's over here on this side. Go ahead and get that out of the way. Okay. All right, so those are connected to a full bar of plastic down here that's holding the whole thing down. So you're going to have to remove both screws on one side to be able to remove the piece of plastic here. Let's go ahead and see if we can get that out of there. All right, there you go. So here's one side of the pull-down plate that's connecting the bed into place during shipping. We'll get that out of the way. Let's move over to the near side and we'll remove the two that are over here. And one more. Alright, so there we go. We've got both of our hold-down plates out of there that are connecting that bed down to the bottom. 
So we've got one zip tie up here going around the cardboard box they have around the print head. We're going to go ahead and cut that zip tie. There we go. We'll pull that out of there. Looks like we can move the print head now and get the cardboard piece they have surrounding it. Wow, that's a big print head. All right. Go ahead here and look in the back here. There's a piece of tape holding down the filter system. We're going to get rid of that piece of tape in here. All right, let's get that piece of tape out of there. Over here on this side, there's another zip tie keeping the X, Y axis together. That way we can move the print head forward now. Underneath that, you can see the filter system, and it's got a bag inside of it. So you're going to want to pull that out, take the bag off the activated charcoal filter that's in there. Just like that. And we're going to replace that filter, kind of spread it out. Put that back into the holder here. Make sure you get it nice and even in there, kind of set up right. And we're going to put that right back into place so we have a good activated charcoal filter inside the system. Quickly here we'll grab our little plus four quick start guide. Let's take a look at what we've got going on next. We've got our screws on the bed out. We've got our cable ties removed. Uh, let's see here. Looks like that's basically it. Uh, we've got a filament system. Retrieve the illustrated accessories from the bottom of the cart and install them according to the on-screen instructions. Alright, this looks like it's going to be our filament holder. It's actually screwed onto the back and sits up above the back of the machine back here. That's going to be in one of the other boxes, so we're going to go ahead and grab the other box. I'll go ahead and open that up for you guys here so you can see what we've got going on. All right, so we've got a power cable right here. Let's go ahead and set that down on the print surface. And here's the two-part piece that we've got for the actual spool holder. Let's go ahead and see if we can get that out of there. I'm gonna drop that box. All right, so we get rid of the foam. So there you guys go. And it looks like this is actually a two-part system. So it looks like that part slides off, shows in the directions that we're now gonna attach this first. And then we're gonna come in and be able to slide that down into place and that'll actually hold everything and we can put our spool holder right into the top of that just like this. Brought the camera around to the back of the machine so you can see this. There's these four screws right here in the corner. You can see them. Let's go ahead and undo those screws. And they don't have them very far in there. They're just barely set in so they're pretty easy to remove. We'll grab our little plastic block. Let's go ahead and drop one of the screws in there to get started. We'll set that up into place. Let's go ahead and get that going. All right, we'll install the rest of these three screws and we should have our filament holder ready to go. All right, let's go ahead and change the camera up just a little bit so you can see this. Let's go ahead and turn around the filament holder. Should be able to slide that right into place just like that. We're ready to go. The last part of this is now done. I think all we've got to do is the setup on the computer. All right, guys, so there we go. We've got our power on, ready to go. You should see the screen lighting up here. It's going to go through a first step process, show us how to remove all the screws, all of that. We're going to kind of bypass that since we did all that already. And then it's going to show us how to use the filament load, which is pretty easy, but I'll go through that with you guys since we haven't really covered it. All right, there we go. Please select a language. We've got English. Okay, remove all the ties. All right, so there's that. Remove the four bed screws. Okay, about moving platform, make sure the platform is clean and unlocked. There we go. And you see the platform's now moving up, and the head is moving just a bit here. All right, so it is initializing both of those. All right, so the bed went up and down a couple times for the initializing. We're now at the next step of this, telling us how to install the spool holder, which we've already done. Okay, so over here, let's go ahead and do the side. There's this little hole right here below the spool holder, and there's a little chunk of PTFE tube that they give you that they're going to want you to install into that. And that is the filament guide right there. Next, we're going to go ahead and pull a section of the filament down, and we're going to feed that all the way through the tube up into the print head. Let me do that real quickly here. We'll get that started in the PTFE tube and we're going to feed that all the way up into the print head. All right, so it's up into the print head. Okay, let's go ahead and go next. Let's 
go ahead and set up the uh, nozzle temperature for the material we're using, which is going to be 230 degrees Celsius. Okay, so give that a moment, it'll heat up, and then once that's heated up, we'll go ahead and keep going. Okay, so our nozzle temperature's reached our set temperature. Let's go ahead and hit next. Okay, click the load button and keep pushing the filament until it comes out of the nozzle. Okay, so there we go. We've just got up to our main screen here. All right, now that we've got the filament in there, the next step of this is that we're going to want to go ahead and go through the auto leveling and we're going to want to do the input shaping on this. So I believe that's in tools. We're going to go up to auto bed leveling. Uh, level, let's go, to, let's go 60 degrees Celsius because we're printing with PLA. We'll hit play. All right, so it's got a bunch of little things it's going to do real quickly here. First of all, it's going to position. Next, it's going to nozzle clean and then nozzle cooling, compensation, and value collection. All right, guys, we finished all the input shaping and the auto leveling. Let's go to documents. All right, let's go ahead and hit our 3D Benchy and see just how long this takes to print. And we're going to hit play on that. All right, it lets us know that if we have the enclosure shut, which we do, it might be a little too hot for the PLA that we're using. Go ahead and back out for you guys a little bit here. You can see what we've got going on. I did install the glass lid up here on the top. You can hear that when I'm tapping on it. It's a nice solid lid. The handles that you can grab it with actually come up through the top of that, which is pretty nice. I'll get the camera somewhere where we can get a little bit better look, and we'll let the Benchy print, and then we'll take a time lapse of that and put it into the video for you. Alright guys, so we're done printing our Benchy. Now to be fair, I've had to print a couple of these. I noticed that the table I had it on was shaking pretty bad and it might have been affecting the quality of the Benchy a little bit. Let's go ahead and hit complete. This says it took 22 minutes, which is not the fastest Benchy out there. We'll zoom in here real quick, just give you guys a look of what this looks like. Tell you the truth, it looks pretty good. The only thing that I'm seeing that I don't like is right here on the smokestack. Looks like there's a little bit of blobbing, which could just be some of the parameters need to be adjusted just a little bit. The flow rate slowed down just a little bit. That could be something we could fix in the slicer. Other than that, it looks like all the overhangs, the bridges, all those look good. Let's go ahead and grab that out of there. Looks like we're going to have to pull the plate to get it. Little bend right here. All right, there we go. Stick that back in place. Let's take a look at this Benchy in the light. Yeah, I see a little bit of ghost banding on there. Not real bad. Up here at the top, all the arches, the opening in the window there, everything looks really nice. I don't really see any stringing anywhere. The back looks pretty good. It's just this one corner that I'm having some issues with right there and right up here on the smokestack. All of that we can probably get rid of by changing some of the slicer settings. Other than that, it is a pretty decent looking Benchy. So let's go ahead and try one more print and then we'll take a look at that and we'll call it an end to the video. Let's go ahead and pick a different print here. We'll go to Docs. And let's go ahead and try the fidget design here and see how well it does. That's going to take 32 minutes, it says, so we've got plenty of time. We've got our time lapse hopefully working. I'll add that into the video if it does. Let's go ahead and hit play and confirm. All right, guys, I'll show you what that looks like when we're done. All right, so we've completed printing the fidget device they provide with the files of the printer. I'm not really sure what you do with this other than just move it back and forth and act like you're exercising your gamer thumb. It's kind of what it looks like. It's got a little coil spring. I do notice that the quality of the print is excellent compared to the Benchy. It's a much higher quality print. I don't see any flaws in that print really anywhere at all. In fact, that looks really, really nice. So there you go, guys. There was a unbox setup and our first two prints with the Quiddy Plus 4. I hope you guys enjoyed. Until next time, this was Mr. Teslonian.